wintry day here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And I thought I'd take a minute to do a live chat and walk you through uh, sort of what's going on in the business and and um, and what's happening in our world. A lot of times we'll do a live feed from my house when I'm there with Melissa. Uh, but today, well, heck, I thought that we would uh, chat together and uh, and talk a little bit. So it has been, uh, I'm actually gonna find a spot to set the camera down so we can kind of just <laughs> have a little bit of a chat. Um, it, boy, has it been a busy um, uh, last, couple uh, weeks here. We've had uh, a couple auctions that we've been working on. Um, so the first auction ended was a great success. And uh, surprisingly, there's still more jewelry to go. And that's happening on the 13th of uh, February. So just the day before Valentine's Day, um, there's going to be a whole pile of other uh, jewelry that goes up for sale then. Uh, in, the meantime, in the meantime, though, uh, I've been taking stuff over. Melissa and I have been working really hard to get uh, everything up and running for that sale. Um, and uh, this weekend, um, all the furniture, antiques, collectibles, uh, the majority of the stuff that you saw me pull out of the house uh, on those video series um, is going to be uh, up for sale on the 30th, so this coming Saturday. So just an awful lot going on. Uh, and I'm looking at the um, uh, live feed stream coming through here. So hello, Patricia, Nicholas, uh, see a whole bunch of people logging on from all over the place. Um, yeah, it, it has been, uh, boy, just an absolutely uh, astounding last couple weeks. And we're so very pleased with how things went. Um, and yeah, to give you an idea. So uh, it is actually kind of chilly outside, but I'm going to show you where um, everything is going to be going and what all this has been about. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that we've been saving up to try and put up this little cafe edition. And I thought I'm gonna walk you guys through all the money that we're earning from these auctions is going towards that building. Um, but I'm gonna show you exactly what the plan is. So if you're ready for a little field trip, I'm gonna take you guys along. So uh, inside my store, which is a 1913 heritage building, <laughs> we've got Zoltar over there hanging out. Um, we have all these antique heritage sort of shelves. And um, there's several rooms. So there's a room at the front of the shop. Uh, and then there's several rooms at the back. And I know a lot of you have seen me walk through our shop before. Uh, oddly, not a lot of my videos are uh, here at the store. I'm just going to turn my kitchen light on. And yes, there's a little kitchen because this did have a house in the back here at one point. Um, <laughs> and there is... Oh, thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate that. There is a piano that came from the house. Um, it's just awaiting its new home in the new edition. Uh, we've got all sorts of uh, toys and knickknacks and my skull chandelier that I made <laughs> all here. And, and um, we are going to be uh, looking at putting an addition on the outside. So we're going to walk around and I'll show you that. Uh, there's a little art room. So anyway, we have these little sections set up around the store. Um, where there's, you know, in, indigenous art, soapstone carvings, original paintings, uh, all kinds of cool stuff that uh, those I found in Mary's house. Those are uh, artists named Les Graff, one of Josh's painting of Clint Eastwood. If you haven't checked out Josh, Josh's channel, he's a quite talented uh, young guy who uh, we're friends with. And... So once you get to the front of the store, it's about a thousand square feet. It's not huge at the front, but it's a good size space. It's a good enough space. Um, here's the plan. Uh, washroom is around the corner. There are double doors right there. And there's sort of a, a natural intersection here in the shop. And you can kind of see the little uh, stone area or well tile area there. That is going to be the attachment point, the entrance to the new shop. It's going to have its own entrance on the outside. But uh, those doors will open up wide during the day with no pillar in the middle. And that'll be a big hallway that basically goes directly into the other building. Um, I'm going to walk around the front of the store and show you guys. It's funny, the uh, stabilization on the videos for live feeds is not nearly as good as it is when I just film regularly, but that's okay. We're kind of winging it today. So when we get out to the front of the store, you can see we have this great, you know, boomtown sort of heritage building, and we have this vacant lot next to us. And very soon, what will be there um, I wanted to change the plans for the building a little bit and make, uh, I'm not sold on the idea of the garage door front. Uh, we wanted it to originally to look kind of like an old fashioned garage. Uh, thank you so much, Aubrey. I see that. <laughs> I trust somebody that says Aubrey MD that they know what they're talking about, but we are, 
approved to, to build. So uh, last year we poured the patio, which is right here. We put in some trees, a little bit of landscaping. I got my friend Dave to come and do this vintage Coca-Cola sign with a slightly demonic looking Sprite guy. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, and so right when we get to this space here is where the building starts and it's gonna run all the way to the back. That's the intention. Uh, that's a water and sewer line coming up over there, which we put in last year. And then there's the other side of that double door, which will uh, attach through. So lots of uh, plans. And it's exciting to think that this vacant plot of land that's between these two buildings will be soon fitted with a new little building and a new lease on, uh, on life here as we try and uh, get a little cafe put up. So there goes a little snow plow. Um, there's a bike path that runs outside, a community hall, a playground. Um, this area has a lot of uh, folks that just walk around and uh, take in the scenery, especially in summertime. Whew. The camera seems shaky right now. It's probably because I'm cold and I'm shivering. <laughs> I probably should have put a, uh, I probably should have put a jacket on when I was out there. Ooh. It is, uh, I think, minus 22 or something like that today uh, in Celsius, which is still pretty cold. There we go. I'm going to set that down. Ooh. <coughs> so uh, anyway, that's sort of a brief tour of what we have planned for the outside there. Um, yeah, it's pretty chilly out today. I probably should have taken a coat with me. And um, all that work and all that effort um, to, to make that, uh, that place, um, cleaned out, uh, definitely was worthwhile. And we definitely appreciate all you guys watching. Um, Infinity Magnus, shout out from South Edmonton, all the way from the South side. <laughs> yes. Uh, nice to see you guys on. Um, so this, this is what I've been up to basically all this past week. Uh, all this past week, Melissa and I have been working really, really hard to get, uh, items inventoried and bagged and ready for that next sale, which is going to be on the 13th. So we've been kind of piggybacking auctions um, from for the last week or so here. Uh, you know, with the big one that we did last weekend, and then um, this weekend we have another big sale, and then another one after that. And eventually that will be all the money we need to get that place put up and furnished and finished. And um, I tell you folks, I've never been more excited about something. Um, <laughs> well, that's not true. I, <laughs> I've been excited quite a bit about, you know, kids being born. But I mean, in terms of things for this year, that's what I'm most excited about is getting that building put up. Um, so, uh, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a, a nice size space. Um, it'll be uh, adding basically another thousand square feet to uh, the footprint of our location here. Uh, and it will be its own separate little building with its own bathroom. So if at some point we decide to lease out that other space. Um, and that's kind of the intention is that we're going to build it and hopefully find somebody that would like to rent it from us and run a coffee shop or something from it because um, um, we're pretty busy as it is and um, you know it would just be nice if somebody else who wanted to have that business uh, would run it but uh, yeah we got to get the building put up and it's going to be so exciting um, we're very very excited for it and yes there will be a YouTube series I see somebody asking um, we're going to continue that on and um, we started that series uh, with, there's a playlist called, um, I think the old cafe or something along those lines. I should probably know what my playlists are called, but anyway, there's a playlist there that shows you just how difficult it was to get, um, you know, to get uh, the process started and to get uh, permission. So um, uh, from the city to get everything going. And now we're at a space where um, we're ready to go. And it's all, all steam ahead, full steam ahead right now. Uh, so I'll probably try and take a, a couple minutes to answer some questions while we're here too. And then maybe I'll end off with a little bit of a tour around the shop. Um, so, uh, yeah, if there's somebody, uh, our friend Bill, German Bill, who I don't think has been on any episodes, used to run and own a coffee shop at one point. Um, uh, but I, I think, uh, if we can't find somebody to rent it, we may look at just uh, hiring somebody to help run it for us. Um, Ellen Sheffer says, I think it's pretty amazing that you're going to incorporate some of Madame Rack's treasures in the old cafe. Yes, well, her piano certainly would be in there because I think at some point it'd be nice to have a place for her students or for people who love music to be able to come and, and play um, some live piano. And it's just a nice ambiance to have the grand piano in there. Class up the joint a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, uh, just trying to read uh, some of the other comments here. Uh, hello from Norway. <laughs> Hi, hello, Norway. Um, what does Zoltar have to say about the cafe edition? You guys want me to do a Zoltar reading? Hang on. 
I have to I have to pay him to get my reading done. So <coughs> I'm gonna take what we call a toonie. If you're in Canada, you know what that is. It's a two dollar coin, <coughs> and we'll go get the. Uh, We'll head over there. <laughs> Let's see. I'll do a Zoltar reading. Somebody said that my before I did the auction, Zoltar said great things are yet to come. Uh, and then great things were yet to come. Uh, all right. So here we go. Here's the uh, Zoltar reading. This is one of the things we do sometimes when we're live at the store. We come here and we pay Zoltar for our fortune. Zoltar the Gypsy at your service. Uh, today is your lucky day, my friend, for I have a fortune especially for you. Listen closely. Sometimes you can tell a wise person not only by what he says, but also by what he doesn't say. Remember, it is much better to say little than to say too much and regret it later. Give Zoltar your treasure. I have much wisdom to share with you. Okay, let's see what Zoltar had to say. Uh, this is my fortune for today. Zoltar says, um, a new turn of events will soon come about. A happy reunion with a loved one will make life all that you ever wanted or dreamed to be. You have a very trusting nature and are easily taken in by so-called friends. Hmm. Do not be so anxious to do favors unto others as there is one who is just waiting to take advantage of your good nature. Well, that's kind of a downer. <laughs> well, thanks, Zoltar. At least he's saying that I'm good-natured. I don't like the... Um, easy to be taken advantage of part, but uh, there we go. So there is my Zoltar fortune for today, and apparently the winning lottery ticket numbers. Your lucky numbers today. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't play the lottery. Maybe one of you will. You can pause it and try those numbers. Let me know if you win a billion bucks. So Zoltar uh, hustled me out of my two bucks to tell me that I might get taken advantage of. I think Zoltar is the one that took advantage of me today. He's <laughs> and Look, he's asking for more money back there. Um, I'm going to do a little walkabout. Uh, Jean-Michel, thank you so much from the south of France. Appreciate that. Um, let's flip this around now. Uh, if you recall, at one point, I had all my walls covered in cameras. Um, now we've thinned out um, the majority of them, and it's gotten a lot better now. Uh, Sergeant Red, thank you so much. Uh, this, These are things that I'm actually... Like, you know, we found all the jewelry in the house, and that was fine. But when I find Hot Wheels, like Red Lines matchbox toys, dinky toys. That's when I get excited. And so we always carry like a little assortment of uh, matchbox. You know, uh, some of them have their boxes, which you can see back there. Those are always nice to find. And that's what I started off collecting. Um, incidentally, matchbox toys exactly like that were sold brand new in this store back in the 60s. Uh, and it's kind of ironic that here I am selling them again <laughs> with higher price tag, of course. Uh, we have some baseball and hockey cards, some autographs, including autograph Gordie Howe. Um, lots of toys. So we have little areas. Like this is toys and collectibles and people who are into that stuff come over here. Um, these are all uh, vintage safety razors, straight razors, fat boys, um, th which is a specific type of Gillette razor. Uh, those are all, I mean, have you ever, I, every time I go to a house, I ask if they have safety razors because people still buy them new and they're like 50 bucks to buy a new one. So you can get one of these for like 20, that's Canadian dollars. Um, it's really good quality and a much better price. Some old fountain pens, you know, uh, the ones people are generally looking for are kind of like with a swirl or uh, bake light, like the, the more interesting they are. And some need a little bit of repair. So like they're 10 bucks or so. Um, I think it's the, the camera focusing, uh, is making it blurry. My camera is okay. And it's okay at my end. Um, I think it's just the nature of the live feed. All right. What do I have at the front? Well, locally made teas and coffees and hemp seeds and jams and things like that. This was the exciting thing I got in the other day. Uh, autographed and PSA certified Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle baseball. That's a good score. I was pretty happy about that. And of course, I played baseball for many years, right up till high school. Um, Mickey Mantle, number seven. Lucky number seven. And Joe DiMaggio, number five. Um, those are pretty big names in the world of collecting. So really great to have uh, some nice autograph pieces in here. And of course, Civil War pistols and all sorts of fun stuff. I shouldn't say fun. Interesting artifacts. Uh, everybody always says, uh, oh, there's the cuckoo clock, which I guess I need to wind because the bird looks like it came out and croaked. I'll have to wind that back up today. It's a black forest piece. So everything on here is all carved. Um, and you know, we carry some new things too, of course, like, you know, funny little, uh, <laughs> coffee mugs and, and stuff like that, that, uh, you know, I just thought were kind of quirky that we like to have in the shop. 
so the front of the shop is sort of giftware, and then the other 85% of the store is antiques and collectibles. Um, this is a bat boat, and many people have seen this in the background uh, in other videos, and they ask about it all the time. This is the only one in the whole world because my friend Kelly, who's an artist and um, uh, scale modeler, built this. Uh, it took him over a year to build from a one-quarter scale boat. And it is massive. There's my hand. <laughs> it's like absolutely huge. It's, I don't know, three and a half feet, four feet long, something like that. Anyway, it's really, really cool. Um, and these figures are the perfect little fit for in there. So uh, a lot of folks ask, ask, say, oh, that's neat. And yes, it is neat. That's why we have it. I like one of a kind things. And the DC-3, which runs about 900 bucks. It's all aluminum. Anyway, there's certain things that I really think are neat. Uh, there's a couple of these little nesting hen dishes that I got out of the house. Those are pretty fun. And, uh, of course, World War II with the, with the netting on it. These are all original 100-year-old uh, horse prize trophies from uh, the Edmonton Horse Show. Uh, those came from the guy that I got the uh, Royal McLaughlin Buick from. You have to go back and watch those episodes. There's the uh, Murano Art Glass. Hopefully we're back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I bumped the camera. Uh, these are the Murano art glass uh, pieces that I found in the house. And uh, the first time Melissa and I went through, a lot of you said, you got to go back for those, and I did. In fact, I went back for everything. Um, there's my uh, 74, I think it is, Telecaster, sitting over there that I have out now. The old jukebox, which I was assembling in my garage. Uh, the cuckoo clock does work. It's $400 Canadian as a, is an antique mantle clock for somebody asking. And you know, this is a, this is quite an old piece. Actually, this clock is a fuse a movement. So it's a chain movement. It does work. I haven't had it going lately though. Um, and occasionally, I don't know if you remember the episode where I got the uh, Picasso vase. I got these at the same time. These are, um, Arthur Pellin 1970s limited edition prints. Um, like silk screens is what they are, but I just love the coloring on it. Very 1960s. Really, really cool. Um, Josh's painting, somebody was asking about. Uh, this is a really big piece. It is, oh, what is it? One, two, three by four or something like that. So it's, it's big. Again, a normal size human hand. I don't have tiny hands, but look how big that thing is. Uh, Josh's painting is priced at $2,200, but uh, if Josh might need some money, I'm sure he'd probably uh, negotiate a little bit on it. Uh, we're always happy to display his artwork here. Actually, he, not only did he do the, uh, the Clint Eastwood, uh, he also did the uh, Indigenous Chief that's over on this side. And uh, I don't know if he had the Chief's name on that. I don't think it's Poundmaker, but he'd have to tell me which chief that is. But I just love the, uh, the use of colors and the intensity of his art. Anyway, it's really, really cool. Um, and then we have original 1800s or 1900s uh, pictures of listed artists. King Lear, that's an original uh, watercolor uh, that was done for this brochure, actually. So see, there's the brochure for King Lear that was playing at the Citadel Theater. And somebody did that original artwork for it. So if somebody's into Shakespeare, that's a really, really neat piece to have the artist's original and the brochure from the uh, from the play. Anyway, I just love neat stuff. And look, there's my son's little guitar that he made. It's always fun to have uh, interesting little bits of art and pieces around the store. Cash register. This is a candy store size, which is smaller, is a little bit more desirable. Uh, my gas pump sold the other day. I guess the guy's coming in in the next week or so to uh, pick that up. So just lots and lots of, well, every around every corner there's stuff. You know, these are all stacks of, <laughs> look how many of these things I have. These are all stacks of vintage 50s and 60s hot rod magazines. And uh, those, you know, we put them out for 10 bucks each and people come in and sort through and buy them. I guess if they've got a car like that or not, but uh, records like crazy, <laughs> books, um, so yeah, we, we try and keep a, a good variety of things and even die cast cars. I buy collections of die cast cars every so now. Many of you ask, why don't you do an online store? You know, list everything online. Um, the reason I don't do an online store is that, um, we primarily sell locally. And when we do sell online, um, we sell through auction because I don't have the capacity. I'm not set up to, to ship that much stuff all at once. So we ship little things here and again, like I'll post stuff on the internet. Uh, or something that will reach us at the shop and give us a call or email us and we'll, we'll mail things out. But right now I am the, the janitor, the shipping department. I'm kind of doing everything. <laughs> um, 
so uh, it's just um, we're trying to take it in uh, small doses the way you know as much as we can do on our own. Um, so guys, uh, I guess I'll I'll end off fairly soon here, but before I do, I'll take a minute to answer some questions. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna read. I uh, think you need a bigger shop again. Yeah. Um, well, I mean. We kind of specialize in smaller, interesting things, uh, knickknacks, curios, artifacts. I don't get into a lot of furniture. Um, I don't know whether that's wise or not. There's always neat furniture that I have access to, but um, I find it takes up a lot of space considering what you can typically sell it for. Uh, the shop is about 1,700 square feet, and we're adding another 1,000 square feet right away, so that'll be good. Um, we have some music memorabilia in terms of old posters. Um, have a couple really neat Bob Dylan uh, uh, concert posters that came in, which are cool. Uh, cool sports stuff. Yeah, I mean autographed Mickey Mantle and Joe DiMaggio baseballs. I've got a Mickey Mantle rookie card as well um, Which is just out getting graded. Um, so yeah, we, we get some cool stuff. At least I think it's cool anyway uh, Hans and Zenobia, I believe are doing fine. I have not talked to uh, Hans in probably about a week or so, but I think they're doing okay uh, Let's see um, there will be a, another jewelry auction. Some people are asking about more jewelry There will be another jewelry auction happening on February 13th so if you miss some things on the last sale or if they went a little higher than you were hoping, we put um, another variety through that uh, probably won't go as crazy uh, expensive. Um, so we'll see what happens on the 13th. But um, yeah, that's all going on. And uh, let's see, the status on the garage edition. Uh, okay, so Mother Wolf, uh, I started off kind of talking about the status of the, um, the garage. We are approved for building. And for those of you that followed me for a long time, you know that the city at first said I could not build unless I put in a, like a million dollar fire hydrant and I said, that's crazy. Uh, eventually we, we kind of fought that and won and now we have permission to build uh, and we can build at any time. The only thing preventing me from building is the weather. And uh, if you look outside right now, it's not super nice out. <laughs> it is pretty snowy. There's my little FJ cruiser out there. It is winter outside right now. Um, so you can't do, you can, okay, here's the thing. I could start building right now, but the problem is you have to thaw the ground because you can't just, uh, you'd have to tent and heat the ground to make it so it's pliable enough for them to dig and do the things they have to do and then, uh, heat it for concrete. That, that takes a job. Let's say for instance, putting in the, um, uh, the infrastructure, like the water line, moving the, uh, water line over. Uh, we have to do another um, uh, extension there. It's $1,100 to get that done. If you want to get it done in winter, it turns into a $5,000 job with the cost of heating, tenting, and extra work. So uh, it's like add, it's four times more expensive, roughly. It adds $4,000 more. Um, so yeah, we're going to wait until spring, and then we're going to start. Uh, so that's the plan. In the meantime, I'm trying to source uh, interesting items to go in the building. Uh, I want to do uh, like a copper uh, pressed tin ceiling and nice tile floors. I have some some plans. I've got plans, folks. So right now I'm planning and getting everything lined up and uh, everything is coming together. Uh, future project after the cafe. I think my priorities this year are to sell the potter's house, number one. And I'm hoping the people that are renting will, will buy that. Uh, to sell my other location because we still own that other building. If you watch the early episodes, I'm in another store. In fact, I had somebody come in here the other day and he's like looking around because the other store had a second floor. And he's like, well, where's your staircase? I'm like, that was the other place. He's like, oh. <laughs> so uh, we still own that building. We have tenants in it right now, but I need to sell that too. Once those are gone, I don't know, a truth be told, I'd like to find a place for my mom. But, um, uh, you know, aside from making sure my mom's looked after and okay, uh, it would be nice to find another old heritage building and fix it up. I love... One thing I've learned about myself in the last couple of years is I love finding old sort of neglected buildings and properties and fixing them. Um, it's, it's really rewarding and it's nice to see something come back together. So I would like to do another old general store at some point or another old building, but we'll see. Um, I'll try and answer a couple other questions here too before we log out to get today. Uh, Captain Eilish Ireland uh, says, did you see my email about the scale? Yes, we had that... Uh, uh, round scale that we had come through. I can't remember. I think we had a price of like a couple hundred dollars or something like that Canadian. Anyway, if you're inter interested, drop me another email. I am going to try and get caught up on my emails. I've not checked my phone messages in uh, about a week's time. So I'm, I'm way behind on that stuff. Um, so I'm going to try and get caught up today. It's just been crazy getting stuff ready and over to the auction house. 
and I will be very happy to try and get everything all uh, done and wrapped up over there. Update on the uh, Rolls Royce, how, how that is coming along. The Rolls Royce is um, just about done with the shop and uh, everything is going well. They've got it running and driving and that's the thing. Once you get a car running it up to temperature, you find out, does it need a thermostat? How are the brakes? Are the brakes working good? So they're just going through everything, making sure it's good to go. And then um, it should be back home, hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, uh, Melissa uh, has a whole bunch of stuff she needs to edit and put out. She's not done a video lately because frankly, she's, she's a teacher and she's been very busy. Um, and, uh, she's been helping me out with getting the, um, auction stuff ready. So I think now that things will settling are settling down a bit, we'll probably, uh, see some more videos from Melissa. Steven is actively in school. And so he's not put out a video in a little while because he's been, uh, focusing on schoolwork. He's got some final exams that are happening right now. And so as a parent, I want to encourage his art and encourage his YouTube channel, but um, YouTube and social media takes a backseat when it comes to his education. Uh, our mission is for the kids to get the best grades and, and exceed and excel at what they do at school first. And then they'll do, uh, they can do the other fun stuff later on. So we're, we're getting our kids to focus on school and um, just, you know, being kids for right now. When he has some free time, he'll do a video. Um, <laughs> we are, uh, of course, investing the money into this building and, uh, I'm very much looking forward to getting that started. So, uh, everything will be, um, all moving ahead and that's really great news. Uh, okay. So I'll try and answer a couple other questions here as they come through. Um, thank you very much for the thumbs up. Thank you to all of you who have, uh, subscribed to our channel and, uh, everything is, um, tickety boo so far. Uh, can I get more tickets for Zoltar if he runs out of fortunes? Yes, Zoltar, I can get, I, they still make Zoltar machines so I can order new tickets. So far, he hasn't run out of fortunes. He's been just fine. Um, so guys, um, let's see. Here's where we're going to end it. Building is moving ahead. I'm getting um, quotes and I'm getting things put together for spring, uh, spring summer construction. Um, we have two more auctions coming up at, uh, at Kastner's. We uh, completed the last one and eventually I'll get paid for that. But we have um, an auction happening on this weekend. A lot of the stuff that came out of the house, pictures, paintings, artwork, furniture, all that stuff that was in the house is going up for auction this weekend. And I want to stress if you're overseas, like in Germany or something, I don't bid on a giant piece of furniture because it's going to be very impractical to try and uh, ship something like that. I mean, unless you have like a shipping container and you're like, oh, don't worry, I'll have somebody come pick it up. The auction house isn't really prepared to ship a, a piece of like a glass uh, curio cabinet over to, to Europe. So uh, bid practically when you're bidding on these things. Um, that said, most of the other items will be able to be um, shipped and sold if it's uh, reasonably sized. In the United States, there should be no shipping anything anywhere. Uh, it's just the big stuff like over to Japan or something like that. Um, so that auction sale is happening on the 30th. We will do a live feed uh, then and we'll see how the first little batch of stuff goes. Um, and then February 13th is the uh, final jewelry auction sale and uh, you know it'll go. Uh, I see somebody saying, where's the tow truck you had outside? I sold the tow truck uh, last year because frankly, Melissa and I needed money to pay for some stuff. Uh, we were shut down for a little bit. Um, so we sold the tow truck off, um, which is fine. You know, we'll, we'll just end up putting uh, probably more chairs out there for the patio for the, the other building for the site. But um, lots and lots going on. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I know we've got a few thousand people watching with us right now. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, boy, is it ever gonna be uh, exciting to watch the next two auctions end as well. Um, I know a lot of you watched my live feeds and I was just, my jaw was dropped on the floor with how things went and we are uh, still very humbled and um, almost in shock. It, it is not almost in shock, it, it, we are in shock and hoping that the next two sales go well as well. Uh, but thank you guys. Uh, check out my Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G for updated pictures. You can also check us out on uh, Facebook under Curiosity Inc. And uh, if you're interested to see what's happening at these auction sales, uh, you can log into kauctions.ca and look for the Curiosity sale. So it's a musician's house sale happening on the 30th. And very soon, the February 13th sale uh, of the remainder of the um, sort of gold and silver and assorted jewelry will be going up uh, on February 13th. It should be live pretty soon. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you all uh, staying tuned for this live feed. I have to open my store up in a few minutes. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm just working all day today. So have a great day, guys. Um, we'll see you all soon. And bye for now. Bye, guys.